Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And uh, today, we're just going to create a velocity banking spreadsheet from scratch. But before we do that, just want to start off with this quote uh, that I talk about once in a while. So I don't know if you've ever heard of this Bruce Lee quote, but it says, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And you ever notice that most people, their their mind is all over the place. You know, they're doing like 20 things at once. Your typical average uh, high school Students like taking like five AP classes, doing extracurricular activities, maybe doing playing some sports, and there's no focus on really just doing one or two things, right? And and then they continue that path into adulthood and college. They, you know, take all these classes, internship, um, you know, have have a job, and then it's not a coincidence that so many people on social media who are the Gen Z adulthood age are struggling in life because. They're they're only they're doing ten thousand kicks once, but they're not doing one kick ten thousand times, right? And that's why I pretty much make the same video over and over again when it comes to velocity banking, because I just practice over and over again. It's easy. And here's the thing, you know, you need to practice too. You need to watch these videos and and try to create these spreadsheets on your own. Pause it if you need to pause it, but it's relatively easy because it's just elementary school math. A minus B and maybe, you know, clicking somewhere in Excel for uh, the average, right? So, all right. So now let's go ahead and practice our ten, uh, our one kick 10,000 times. So I think this is the 500 and something video. I don't even know. <laughs> but we'll get to 10,000 someday. In fact, there's a, there's a YouTuber out there named Mike Zero. He makes like clickbait videos and he's on his 10,000th I think and that's why he probably has 300,000 subs. All right, so what is velocity banking? All it is is a debt payoff strategy using your line of credit as your main tool and there's only two requirements to do it is number 1 is a budget and then number 2 is a line of credit as your main operating account, right? So that's something we have to consider. Let's go ahead and move this. And uh I always like to start off with uh, two columns, one of them is the average American, right? And then one is the velocity banking or banker or whatever term you want to use. And I like to say average American, and I know some people kind of be like, hey, we're broke here in this country. I'm like, why do you want to be proud of that? But, you know, as a term to say, hey, we use our checking account as our main operating account. Whereas someone who does velocity banking, they use their line of credit as their main operating account, right? So if you want to uh, make this a little bit spiffier, you know, just use like highlights and all that. It looks a little bit better to, and it, you easier to see through the eyes, right? So the average American, the velocity banker, right? And then we have to just write the basics of a budget. So you have your income, and then you have your expenses, and then you have uh, savings, and then, um, I guess we could write this a little bit differently where, you know, we're going to have savings and cash flow because in for the average American, their savings technically is their cash flow, whereas someone who's doing velocity banking, a savings is always going to be zero and cash flow would typically be what would be considered the, the savings number initially, right? So let's say we make $5,000 a month. And again, if you don't like the formatting, you can always click this column and I'll click this column right here hold control and then there's always a there's a formatting cell section right so uh, number and then let's change it to currency and yeah so now you can see it turned to a dollar okay income expenses right so now we need to kind of write down our expense uh, breakdown right so let's do expense breakdown and if you don't know what i'm doing i'm copying pasting so it's just control c and then control v here and then what's really important in our expense breakdown is that we list every single debt that we have right every single debt and the two main websites that i like to use for kind of figuring out the debt um, payment one of them is um, calculator dot i'm sorry calculator dot net <coughs> i'm sorry i'm gonna sneeze and the other one is bank rate right so if I just do Google searches on, you know, bank rate minimum CC calculator, minimum credit card payment calculator, you'll see the minimum payment calculator here. And then you just type in the balance and the interest rate, and then they'll show you your minimum payment. 
So what we do is figure out, you know, what kind of debt we have because this is a debt payoff strategy and our expense breakdown. Um, we have to list every single debt that we have. So, you know, credit card one, credit card two, we'll make this easy. And then we'll say this one has, um, you know, a 10K balance at a 25% interest rate, right? And so if we uh, go here and put that put in that number here, so this is 10, 0, 0, 0, 0 at 25%, then it'll give it'll shoot out a, a realistic minimum payment. It's not going to be exactly like yours because every bank is different. So if you want to know the exact formula that they use, you you have to call the customer service line of your bank or lender. So it's three oh eight thirty three. Oopsie, three oh eight point three three. Okay. All right. So three oh eight thirty three, and then we'll say I don't know. This one is five k, five k at um we'll say 30 percent right i think i have some cards that are 30 percent so we'll say five zero 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 and then 30 and uh 175 right so you can see 175 you just type it in and then for amor loan amortized loans right so let's say we have a um car payment i don't know what's a typical car that you say is twenty four thousand. i've actually to be honest i've never bought a car but i've bought two homes right and so um, I have no idea what they finance for typically. And I'm pretty sure it'll change from year to year. I remember when I first leased a car, um, you know, a $400 a month payment was considered to be insane. But I was driving Uber at the time. I was like, okay, I'll just lease a car. And then, you know, just doing some rides, I was able to pay that monthly lease. Um, but, you know, people are like $400 a month. That's so much. And now people are paying like $700,000 a month for car payments. Uh, I can't even imagine. Like, I, I had no idea trucks were going for $90,000. I was like, what do you need a $90,000 truck for? I mean, back in the day, you know, if you had a Mercedes or a BMW, you were considered to be rich. You know, when I see when I see someone with a new truck, I was like, dang, you must make a lot of money. Because how do you afford a $90,000 truck, <laughs> right? That's what I'm thinking. But let's put a car here. So car, and then, um, I don't know, we'll say we... Do they have uh, down payments on cars? We'll say maybe we got a so small down payment and they'll say 20K, right? 20K and we'll say 5% interest rate. And so when we're dealing with um, things that are not credit cards, we have to use the amortization calculator. So if you want to do that, just type in calculator.net uh, loan amortization. And then uh, go go right here. And then you know just type in whatever you want. So the loan amount is twenty thousand, and then we do five years at we'll say five percent. Car loans typically typically are five to seven years. So again, uh, one of the things you will really want to consider is that the longer the number of years, right, the lower the payment, but the higher the interest, right. So this is a little bit lower, and the interest is slightly higher. So if we do thirty years, like a thirty year. Um, uh, loan the the loan monthly payment is pretty much going to be a lot lower. So let's do that. So 107, but the interest is going to be higher. And 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 in the case of a 30 year mortgage, I always love going over this one. So 30 year mortgage. Um, let's say we have a three percent uh, loan for two hundred thousand dollars, right? Basically, you're paying a fifty percent in interest. And a lot of people don't even realize that. 50% interest. You borrow $200,000, you pay $100,000. You do 5.4, okay, 5.4, that's two. That's that's 100% interest. Meaning I borrow $200,000 and then on top of that, I got to pay an extra $200,000. And I pay a little bit more to the bank than, than the amount that I borrowed. And then if you want to see 200% interest, it's 9.4. Okay, 9.4. Wabam. So, you know, if you're a bad credit and you somehow qualify for a loan, say, congratulations, you got a 9.4% loan. How? And you, let's say you 100% finance this. I don't know if this is even possible. But you borrowed 200000 dream home. Oh, my goodness, I'm so glad. How many homes do you pay for? One, two, three. You pay for three homes, right? So we got to be careful uh, and not just look at the monthly payment. We got to look at the total cost of the loan. And hey, if we could get a low payment, 
amount, that's fantastic, but we just have to be aware that we got to pay it off early. So let me go back here. So 20,000 at 5%. So 20,000 at 5% for, we'll say 10 years. No, five years. Okay. Five years. So 377.42. So let's write that down. 377.42. Okay. And then, you know, any other loans, whether it's mortgage, um, what else? Uh, student loan. Uh, hopefully you didn't go to, you went, maybe went to community college. You know, community colleges have solid education. They do, and it's not that expensive because in almost any good or product, the the um, quality of the product is not really tied to the price as much as it is to demand, right? Like I don't know if you ever heard of basic economics, Adam Smith, about the price, you know, supply and demand. Basically, um, qual uh, quality can drive up demand, but it's not the only factor. So if you have a really hyped up place, um, that could drive up demand, right? Even though the quality may, may may be no good, but hopefully, you know, we didn't spend that much in student loans. So we'll say 12k, and then uh, what's student loan rates? Hopefully, you know, not that much. We'll so maybe four percent. I don't know. Frank and frankly, <laughs> um, you know, I'm way out of that that demographic, that marketplace of of needing a student loan because I think college is a waste of time. But whatever. All right. So now. You know, you just put the same thing here, 12000 and then whatever the term of the length of the loan is, usually 10 years for student loans, and then 4 is the interest rate, right? And then we just do calculate, and then 121.49, 121.49. All right, and then anything else that you want to put, um, we can certainly do that. And um, last one, I always like to do like a housing payment separate. If it's rent, then put the rent. If it's the mortgage, put the mortgage. So we'll just say, you know, a thousand dollars um on the on the rent and then other would be all the other expenses. Food, gas, insurance, you know, your cell phone. You could probably um separate these, right? Make it easier. It like probably in another section. Oh, did I screw up? Okay. So let's do other food gas and insurance all that good stuff so you put all that stuff in there right food gas insurance and then um you know if you i always like to use a general number maybe like 1000 or two we'll say 1500 in this case and so now what we do is once we have all of our debt because every single debt has to be its own line item because the whole point is we pay off debt we get more cash flow right this these general costs will st always stay the same. Same with, well, rent may differ because rent's always been increasing for the past whatever number of years. And I remember there's this article about rent officially reaching $2,000 on the average in the United States, which is crazy because I don't even know if I can afford that, right? And I paid off my mortgage in three years. Isn't that crazy? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and sum up these expenses. So B7 to colon B whatever the last line item is, which is 12. So B7 colon B12. And then it sums up everything, everything right here, right? And then we get to know our expenses. And then our savings, which is, um, you know, income, I'm sorry, B2, our income minus our expenses, B3, right? And so, okay, this is respectable, saving about $1,500 a, a month. Right, so basically, we just gotta copy most of this, okay? Copy it, and copy these expenses as well, okay? Now, really want to emphasize that on, in this column we have savings, and then in this column we have zero savings because we're emphasizing we're doing the exact opposite of what Dave Ramsey or mainstream for personal finance teaches us that we gotta have savings accounts. Susie Orman. Dave Ramsey, zero savings, right? And then we're going to use something similar to savings, but we'll call it cash flow, which is still income minus expenses, right? And But the, the emphasis here is that once we've done our budget, we got to go to step two, which is making our line of credit as our main operating account. Our line of credit is our main operating account. And I always like to make this section right here to kind of calculate uh, what kind of line of credit we need. And so basically, um, 
the one that you want has the highest limits and the lowest interest rates, which is why you know when people talk about Velocity Banking, they like to talk about home equity lines of credit because you're providing your home equity as collateral. And anytime you provide collateral to a lender, they're going to give you uh, better terms and rates and limits and all that good stuff, right? So you know, people are like, I don't want to provide any sort of security or collateral. Okay, then this is what you get, right? And so, well, that's not that much. Well, give us collateral and you'll get more, right? That's that's just how life works, right? No skin in the game means you don't get anything, okay? No, that's really what it is. And people don't want to put any skin in the game and then wonder why they don't get get any, you know, I'm not saying, you know, bet the farm, but just provide something, you know what I mean? <laughs> provide something. And so now what we got to do is take the basics of a line of credit and then make them our own columns. So for let me go ahead and copy and paste these because I like the formatting, but let me go ahead and erase the values. So maybe like the interest rate, right? Interest rate. And again, things you would typically find in a credit card because a credit card is a, technically a line of credit. So, you know, you I have a home equity line of credit and a home equity line of credit is 10% usually. Um, I've seen 8.5 with credit union, so I might refinance with the credit union to get that 8.5. I've seen as low as 7%, right? You want to see 7% home equity line of credit? Let me just show you here. Peach, uh, State, Credit, Union, uh, HELOC right here. It's in Georgia. So let's take a look right here. Home equity line of credit. Peach, Peach State Federal Credit Union. And then uh, let me see right here. Bam, look at this. 7.25%. This is the only credit union where I've seen in the sevens for HELOC rates. The only one. Uh, everyone, like other credit unions, like eight, your typical bank is like nine to 10, right? Right now I got 10, but I'm still winning with velocity banking. But, you know, whatever your interest rate is. And so now, you know, other things too, what's your credit limit? You know, is it ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand? I got a fifty thousand dollar HELOC, but you don't you know, everything is uh based on your personal situation. So there once upon a time I was like five hundred dollar credit card, mind blown, oh my goodness, and then I got a five thousand dollar credit card and mind blown, and now I have over two hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars in credit limits, and I'm like somebody gives me a ten thousand dollar credit card, I'm a little bit insulted. But I'm I'm just gonna be honest there, but well, you know, let's just do a um, ten thousand dollar credit credit limit. That's that's fine. Okay, ten thousand dollars. Actually, let me see. Is it fine? Yeah, let's do ten thousand. Right. So let's do do ten thousand, and then um, all right. Okay. So credit limit. No, let's let I'm gonna do, say fifteen because I'm a little bit. Uh, well, it depends, right? So. Uh, I'm just going to make this exercise easy. And again, make it easy for yourself, right? So do 30,000. And and, and it, you want to if you want to do your own situation, obviously put your own numbers in. And then your your current uh balance. And then also the the interest uh amount or maybe we call it interest paid. Because after every single month, we have to pay interest for using the line of credit. And then the last thing we need is the, the keep track of the months, right? And so really the, the, the columns that we that are dynamic are these ones, right? The, the balance, the interest paid, and the month. And I always like to call the first month, month zero. Um, you can call it month one if you want. It, it really Because a month has to pass in order for the for you know for it to, to call it month one in my point of view but you can do whatever you want all right so now what we need to do is make our line of credit as our main operating account right and so easiest way to move debt into a a, a line of credit um and again we're assuming home equity or personal because they're different from credit cards you know credit cards are technically a line of credit is start out with credit cards highest interest rate they eat up the most cash flow, um, and so what we can do is free up some cash flow by moving this debt. And so there's fifteen thousand dollars here of that debt that we can move into this uh, line of credit, right? So let's see. Let me copy the formatting. Fifteen zero zero zero. Okay. So now, once we've done that, then again. The the actual concept itself is you're putting your entire five thousand dollar income into the line of credit, 
taking these expenses out and then going down every single month by our cash flow. Now, we haven't d completed this yet because we're just moving some debt. And then by moving that debt, guess what happens to these payments? Zero, zero, right? So we went from 1500 to $2,000 of cash flow. Oh my goodness, look how easy that was. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now what we're going to do is complete the formula. So the, the most important formulas is just to add a one on the next month, because that's how we get the next month, previous month plus one. And then to get the next month's balance, it's the previous month's balance, H2, plus I2, which is the previous month's interest, minus our cash flow right here. And you always have to enter it in manually because um, you can't use variables because if you use variables, then then it's going to, once you keep doing this exercise, then whatever uh, balances that you had previously are going to be affected by your new cash flow. So you always want to enter your cash flow in manually, if that makes sense. 2001.09. Okay. All right. So now we need the interest and the interest is calculated by the average daily balance. So use this average formula right here. Multiply it by the interest rate. So whatever this is, 0.1, and then make sure you divide by 12. Okay. So interest 116.66. So once you have these three formulas, right? Once you have these three formulas, all you gotta do is copy and paste these and, and see when it becomes red, right? And then you can see after eight months, they're red. That means it's all loans all paid off. And we don't have to worry about the credit cards. Now, we can still use the credit cards because I use credit cards. But the, the trick is that, that we only use credit cards up to our general expense amount, which would be actually 2500 So if you want to pay rent with a credit card, and I get comments like, you can't pay rent with a credit card. Okay, what's built? Built rewards. It's a credit card for rent, okay? So you can you can use a plastic. If you don't, then just pay the only this up to 1500 So these two credit cards just... You know, don't spend the whole thing and put in additional payments on your debt. Just uh, the biggest advantage, you might get some rewards points. But second is that you can delay the interest that you pay, right? If you're on a debt payoff mission, because you pay things with the credit card, then you pay off the statement balance at full at the very last moment. That's like waiting a month for for to be able to pay off the interest, right? Or the balance, which would be the time that you would pay off the interest as well because – or not pay off the interest, uh, uh, get charged the interest from the line of credit because if I pull in out money directly from a line of credit to pay my general expenses, like let's say today is like the 20th and I pull out the uh, money to pay my expenses from the 20th, then it's so much of a hassle because I got to – they're charging me interest at that moment and I don't want to do that, right? All right, so now – uh, here, I always like to highlight when the cash flow changes. So click this fill color button, click this red, and then now what we do is that we can um, start moving some loans. And again, um, how do we know which loan to move? I always like to use the cash flow index, right? So the cash flow index is essentially um, the statement balance or the current balance. And the current balance is in $20,000. I have to look it up. Divided by the payment, 377.42. And then this one is 12000 divided by 121.49. And so you basically take the lower number, and the lower the number, even better. Um, usually, if you really want to pay it off um, without like accruing as little interest as possible, I would probably just use a chunking method, um, which is just taking out pieces of the loan. But now we're going to make this simple, right? And I'm not even going to go over the mortgage today because to today's uh, video is about just making the spreadsheet, right? That's all it is, just about making the spreadsheet. But if you want to see, you know, one of the things that we have to consider is that when we're dealing with the next debt is to figure out what the current balance is. And I like to use um, the amortization calculator to figure out what the what the current balance is. 20000 for five years at 5%. And then... We're going to go and figure out what the balance is. So what is the balance after – oh, I didn't even get the – I need to, okay, after eight months, right? Eight months. Eight months, which is 17 grand. So I just copy this figure, okay, and then I copy and paste. 
And then now, in order for this payment to go away, I got to move that 17 grand into the line of credit. So what I do is right here is I plus do plus and then copy that figure. Excel doesn't like commas, right? But as you can see, now that uh, this number is in the positive rather than the negative, and then for doing that, this goes to zero and our cash flow increase, increases by a couple hundred dollars, right? So now we just got to replace this cash flow number. So instead of 2001, it's 2378.51, okay? So 2378.51, and then we just make sure it gets copied into, um, wait a minute, did I screw up? No, I didn't screw up, okay. Okay, and then, so now we just make sure we copy the formula, and then we see here at 16 months, okay, 16 months is when that next loan get paid off by simply moving into line of credit, um, right? And so now we have the student loan here. And if you don't know what the cash flow index is, just look it up on Google. Uh, you, you could see a pretty solid explanation because I didn't even create it. But I just think of it as a ranking system of which loans to pay off uh, by order. So now we have to figure it. Now we're done with the car loan, okay? Now we got to do the student loan. And then with the student loan, uh, 12000 We'll just put that right here, one, two, zero, 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 at 10 years at what percentage? It was 4%. Okay. So 4% after 16 months. All right, so now 16 months. All right, so now... This is the current balance of that loan. And let me widen this up. Actually, I do gotta do wrapping, right? That's all right. So now $10,000, then we move this $10,000 balance into that line of credit. Wait a minute, oh no, it's right here. So now this is where it is, and then I copy and paste. Okay, and then now let's get our new cash flow, and our cash flow only increases by a couple hundred, or just one hundred twenty-one dollars, and then our cash flow now is twenty-five hundred. Okay, so now we just got to replace this with twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. Okay. Bam, 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 and then after twenty years. Or not 20 years, 20 months, under two years, all of our loans have been paid off, right? So now we, we actually get to have money in our savings account. So after month one, it's 2500 and then after month two, it's 5000 and so on and so forth. So among the average American who cannot afford a $1,000 emergency, really, <laughs> we actually will have money in our savings account. And in order to manage our cash flow, we have our credit cards, too. Right, credit cards, lines of credit. Uh, I gotta. I think I have to repair my car. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I want to buy a new car or not. But we'll see. But yeah. So we're gonna have actual savings until after we pay off all of our debt, right? Because the whole point of this is zero savings with the help of a line of credit to pay our debt. And when you put every all your money into a line of credit, you can use it whenever you want. That's the beauty of it. It's the beauty of it. All right, so uh, I know the title of this video is only rich people click this uh, video because here, here's the thing. If you study this concept and you apply it as you're making money and you're paying off debts quickly, you're going to be far richer than the average person. Far richer, right? I mean, I know I am. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. Have a happy – today's actually Saturday. I'm going to relax, rest. Make some food and enjoy the day. Good night, everybody. Well, it's not even night. <laughs> Good day, everybody.